This is how I'd answer questions. You the before you called me a genius, that was the first time I ever had someone refer to me as a genius. So you'd say they'd ask me a question. And then I would look up to the sky, I'd look at the ceiling, and then look down and have the right answer. To them they, they're like, that was my process. What they didn't realize was that in that moment I was praying. <laughs> Because there would be questions for which I had no answer. I'd be like, okay, God, what's the answer? Is it A? Is it B? And then in my spirit, I'd feel like it's B. Yeah. I'd say B. So long story short, we got through the quarterfinals. And then the next day was yeah, the se- semis and, and, and finals. Yeah. I couldn't sleep that night. Yeah, of Speaking course. of fear, trepidation, yeah. I couldn't sleep. Yeah. Woke up, couldn't have breakfast. Yeah. Did you like... Uh, Ask yourself, what have I gotten myself into? What yes. was I thinking? What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, like who, who told me that, that this is <laughs> supposed to be a guy from Namibiango and from Smart? Like I was out of my yeah. depth. Yeah. And, and so. If you listen to yesterday's episode, this is a continuation of the same. I was having a conversation with a dear friend of mine called The Solution Ngonzi. He's a, a CEO and a founder, he's a farmer. He is the leader of Gone Rogue Strategies, also an author, a very great guy. I consider him to be a genius. And in this section, we were breaking out to talk about something to do with fear, venturing into fear. And Gonzi tells us one of the most epic stories you'll ever hear about him and venturing into the unknown when he was in primary, when he was in secondary five. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. But anyway, let me ask you a pointed question here. I know you've been alive for quite a while. Tell me of a moment where you experienced fear and you actually went ahead and did it anyway. And what came out of it? <laughs> experienced fear and did it. And there was a time in 2004... Yeah, I think I was in Form 5 at that time. So I was, I was coming back from the bathrooms and I came into the class and I found a question written on the, written on the blackboard and the deputy mistress had walked, had walked out. So I realized she had come mm. to the economics class. She, who was a biology teacher, had come to the economics class and had written a question on the blackboard and walked away. And so I came and like David asked Goliath, uh, the people around him, what's that about? Yeah. So he said, uh, apparently that's a question for a quiz and whoever is interested should go to the head, teacher. head teacher's office. Mm-hmm. And so this was the question. How can companies raise capital using the capital markets? Mm. I've never heard of that. Form 5. Form 5. I'd, I'd never heard of capital markets. But what I knew is, every now and then a company needs to raise capital. Before that, as a child, I'd been interested in the concept of buying and selling shares. Mm. So when I looked at the question on the blackboard, I, asked, I thought to myself, I don't know anything about this. Mm. I'm not the brightest person in this class. Yeah. But 
this seems like something worth knowing. So I followed her, went to, to her office and I told her, I, I saw you had written something in a, in a class blackboard. I'd like to say that I'm interested in being part of this quiz. So she looks at me and says, but you, are you sure? I said, yeah. <laughs> and so we had to be two people. So what she did is she now went to the senior six class mm-hmm. and got the most brilliant person in their class, like their number one performer, yeah. to balance out my average yeah. academic uh, situation, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that in my S5 class, I was average. Mm. So they said, for them to have a better chance, let us get the real brilliant one. The one we know yeah. is brilliant and add him to this one who just has guts. Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So they put us together and we spent some time researching. We put together our essay. We came out number 11. We got into a quiz. Now, that is where the fear comes. Uh-huh. So this was a televised quiz. Mm. And among the people in, my, in, in, the, in the room were people from the best schools in the country. Mm. The Budos, the Gayazas, mm. the Smarks, mm. the biggest school. Mm. Yeah? And then there was also me from my school. My yeah. school was big, but there was me, this yeah. little guy yeah. who did not have the IQ of his partner. Yeah. And so, have you been in a quiz? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when they ask you those questions, and then there is a timer yeah. that's going off. My brother, mm. there are very many permutations in a quiz. There is the, there is the crowd. There is the fear that you're going to forget. There is the fear that the question is going to be difficult, and so on. Very many permutations. And then there are also quiz. those hot girls that are looking at uh-huh. you, and they think, "Yeah, yeah there's a guy, and he's going to flunk." Yeah. So my brother, I remember having my stomach upset. I couldn't eat. Yeah. So we got we get into the quiz. We went to round one. Round two, mm. and then by the end of that day, the first day, round three was um, the quarterfinals. Mm. For some reason, we were in the quarterfinals. What people didn't realize is that every time we took a break, mm-hmm. when guys would go to make tea, to eat food, I would go to the toilet and try and empty my stomach and then get on my knees and say, God, help me. Help me. <laughs> I am out of my league. Yeah. And You're then, punching yeah. far above your weight. And then I'd come back and someone told me that this is how I'd answer questions. You the before you called me a genius, that was the first time I ever had someone refer to me as a genius. So they'd say they'd ask me a question. And then I would look up to the sky, I'd look at the ceiling, and then look down. And have the right answer to them they, they're like that was my process what they didn't realize was that in that moment I was praying because <laughs> <laughs> there would be questions for which I had no answer I'd be like okay God what's the answer is it A is it B and then in my spirit I'd feel like it's B yeah. I'd say B so long story short we got through the quarterfinals and then the next day was yeah, the final, se- semis and, and, and finals yeah I couldn't sleep that night. Yeah, Speaking course. of fear, trepidation, yeah. I couldn't sleep. Yeah. Woke up, couldn't have breakfast. Yeah. Did you like uh, ask yourself, what have I gotten myself into? What yes. was I thinking? What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, like who, who told me that, that this is uh, supposed to be a guy from Namiliango and from Smart? Like I was out of my yeah. depth. Yeah. And, and so the semis come up and somehow we get to the semis. Mm. And then we are in the finals. Mm. Routine repeats. Go to the bathroom, ease myself, get on my knees, and pray. And then at the end of uh, the thing, the, the, last, the last part, we tied. Uh-huh. And then we had to do a, a, do final, decider. a final decider, mm. which we almost tied. At that point, I had come to the end of myself, I was ready to just walk out and say, guys, I, I quit. It was tense. So I remember we were with uh, Chitov. Yeah. So these are the finals. Yeah. Remember how I came to this place? Yeah. I just wanted to know what was the answer to the question, question on the board. On the board. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. Wow. 
I just thought it would be something good to know. Yeah. And so when the results came out, eventually, it turned out that they had taken tallies for everyone in addition to the school. Individual tallies. Individual tallies. Mm. And my my partner's tally was um, the, the form six guy. The form six, the most brilliant guy. Yeah. Was sixty nine point seven. You can still remember that stuff. Yes. Okay. And then the other guys were like seventy and sixty nine. Yeah. Our opponents. Yeah. Well, I think it was a guy with about eighty. Mm. And then the one guy who just wanted to know about how to raise money using a capital market. My tally was 93.3%. Whoa. Whoa. And we won. Whoa. We won that, that capital market secondary schools challenge of 2004. And our prize involved getting shares, which I still do have, wow. in, in, in DFCU Bank. And the most the best part was I got to get on a plane for the very first time and I went to Nairobi to tour the Nairobi yeah, Stock, Stock, Exchange. Stock Exchange and I had a breakfast meeting with the CEO of the, of the Securities Exchange. You guy. I had a mid-morning lunch with the chairman of the Capital, Capital Markets Authority of Kenya. You guy. So let me tell you my one day in Nairobi that year, 2004. Yeah? Arrived in Nairobi Jam at about 6.37. Got to Hilton Hotel for breakfast at 7. Okay, I've never eaten at the Hilton. I uh, had lunch at the Intercontinental. You guy. And then I had dinner at another five-star. Maybe Serena or something. I, I did, there were three hotels. There was Plaza. Mm. Is there a hotel called Plaza Hotel? I don't know. But, the, but you know Intercontinental. I know Intercontinental, I know Hilton. Uh-huh. Hilton is a place where many people normally meet. You know, when you are meeting in town, say, meet me at Hilton. Mm-hmm. Never had breakfast at Hilton. <laughs> Just met there very many guys. Rasta, the, 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 the breakfast at Hilton was about 18 meter, uh, an 18 meter U. Wow. Like 18 meters that way, 18 meters this way. Wow. With all my hunger. <laughs> That's a story for another day. But... We came out, mm. and not only was I number one, not only was, was my school number one, me, the average boy from Ginger, totally unfit to even be in this school. I remember the first day I was in that school, my OB from primary walked up to me and said, even you are here. It, that question disturbed my mind because... I felt like oh, I'm coming from, you know, those yeah. law schools yeah. to now an elite school, yeah. and my OB is telling me I do not belong here. So I had yeah. that inferiority, inferiority kind, kind of a thing. Yeah. So the day I walked into this class and I saw this question, for me, it, it was just something I, I felt I needed to know. But getting through that fear and just... So the, the thing is, the, the most interesting thing is, is this. You had no clue that there's going to be a competition. No, I'd go no to clue bathroom. whatsoever. I mean, no clue. And you had no clue that it's going to be an inter-school thing. Nothing. You had no clue that there's going to be shares. No clue that there's going to be a, a flight. Nothing. No clue there's going to be, you know, dinner, breakfast, lunch at five-star hotels in Nairobi. What took you there was what? I needed an answer. You needed an answer. <laughs> and you provided the answer. And the rest, as they say, is history. It's history. Because we're discussing here how we can leverage the moments of the unknown. Because all this thing is unknown to you, isn't mm-hmm. it? True. Everything that you experienced that came to your life was an unknown. And chances are that, not chances are, but it is actually a fact. You're not the only guy who saw that question on the board. No one in my class bothered to stand Everyone up. saw the question. You are the guy who responded to the question. And now one step led to another, and then another, and then another, and then another. Speaking of questions, let me just say this for you real quick. 
the quality of the life that we live is dependent on the depth and the quality of the questions we are willing to seek answers for. Yeah. Or the questions we are willing to ask ourselves. You know, you want to have hard conversations and, and you've had conversations with other people. Yeah. But you realize that the depth of conversation with certain people follows certain questions. Yeah. That if you ask me the right question, yeah. You will get a plethora yeah. of information. Yeah. And that is the thing about life. Mm. It is unknown mm. because it's a question of us. Like mm. when, when, when God created the world, he mm. had certain questions for which you and I are mm. those answers to those questions. Mm. I want you to think about that very carefully. So if you are not in this constant place of asking yourself, why am I here? Basically, having a spirit of adventure, approaching life from the atmosphere of, uh, from the angle that there's something has got to be solved here. There's an adventure that has got to know. The, having this curiosity in you to know, to keep knowing. That's why I keep going back and telling us, I don't think there's this thing that you can actually secure the future. I, I think you can, you can, every time the day unfolds, gives you the opportunities there are for you to explore and so on and so forth. And to the degree that you explore, you can basically, I think the best we can do in life is to keep growing. Not to secure ourselves. To me, security talks of, you know, gated community with dogs that have been imported and so on and so forth. Keeping things intact, keeping things stable. I asked a policeman around the time of the November riot. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.